Okay. That way, um, that way we'll have everything on the record. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm also evening. checking. Let's go ahead, Mr. Mayor. So yeah, sorry. I was just I was looking to see uh, council member wise. Um, I see Mandy. Uh, I saw Tony and Bill. Yes. Um, okay. Good. And you. Right. Yep. Okay, so good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to this workshop this evening on October 25th, 2022, 6 p.m. This workshop this evening is to discuss the Healthy West Orange Pavil Pavilion, and this is workshop number one. As many of you know, this is a project that the town's been pretty excited about, and the, and the grant funding for Rotary to build this is an exciting prospect for all of us. So as we will see shortly, Mr. Brooks is working with the Rotary team as their project manager. And on the town side, we have Mr. John Fitzgibbon, who has also been a huge part of this process every step of the way. So with that, I would like to turn it over to John to introduce the team members that are here and to get us underway with the presentation. We will have a presentation from Mr. Brooks and his team. And once that's done, we can open it up to questions. Thank you, Tonya. Um, yeah, so tonight we have with us Andy Brooks again uh, with uh, ZHA, who's actually working uh, directly as the project manager for the Rotary. Uh, we also have on board uh, McCree, uh, Richard McCree, as well as I believe Cindy is also on, and then uh, as well um, some folks from uh, I believe Tom is also on from Hunt and Brady. So it's kind of our our uh, design build team uh, from that side of the fence. Um, as you know, on June 8th of 2020, the mayor and town council approved the proposed uh, town uh, event pavilion in accordance with the project management agreement between the Rotary Town of Windermere and also the Rotary Club of Windermere. Uh, we went out and solicited RFQ bids, uh, made a selection with Hunt and Brady McCree design build team um, that was then approved by council. And as part of the requirements of the grant, we are to have uh, at least one workshop, two if required. You guys can make that decision tonight. Um, if you're comfortable with what you see, uh, you, you have the option of whether you want us to come back with additional information for a second workshop, or we can then move directly right into what we call the construction documents, knowing that what we're showing tonight is really the schematic phase. So. Tonight's uh, goal in the workshop is to show you all the work we've done. We've gotten everybody on board with the team. We're now doing construction estimating uh, to ensure what that look is. So it's kind of this now design build phase, you know, getting McCree to agree to a number and then also getting uh, Hunt and Brady to, to agree that that design and that number match. And so that's kind of where we are tonight. We feel we're confident in what we're showing tonight will we'll be that, um, cost uh, within the million dollar grant and that uh, we do have some minor modifications that I wanted to share with you tonight and that Andy will share with you tonight on the red line of the original design guidelines that I established for them. Um, we've gone through most of those design guideline uh, comments back and forth um, with both McCree, Hunt and Brady and CHA. So I think we have basically a package tonight that is kind of our schematic concept design. And if you guys are good with it, then that means we would probably move forward into the construction documents. So I'm gonna turn it over to Andy Brooks from ZHA and let him walk you through the process. Thanks, Andy. Thank you, John, for introducing everybody, but I'm gonna just step away and let Tom discuss their design and start off with the site plans you see in front of you. Sure, thank you. Uh, hopefully you could hear me okay. Um, so yeah, I want to talk through a little bit about the design. Um, so first looking at the site plan, just to orient everybody, um, north is to the right side of the page. So uh, so as we're looking at this west, uh, west would be toward the top. So you know, we're at the uh, intersection here of uh, West Fifth Avenue and uh, Main Street right behind uh, right behind the basketball courts. Um, we, we, we took a great deal of effort of siting the building um, to be uh, to be situated one to maximize the amount of spectator area that we can have um, uh, in front of the stage uh, stage area um, uh, without impacting um, or minimizing the impact to existing trees as much as possible, um, as well as existing um, 
uh, sanitary system that's uh, that's further to the west of where the building's located. Uh, also, the connection of the sidewalks of where this is, where it's in close proximity and tying into the sidewalk system for the building, uh, the old town hall there just to the south, um, and then curving around and connecting more toward the north, uh, which exits out onto uh, West Fifth Avenue. Um, the orientation of the building, where the stage is oriented, faces east. Um, that was intentional in that um, you know, there's more private residences that are further to the west. So from a sound, sound transmission standpoint, directing the stage further to the east, where there's more public spaces, more commercial establishments across Main Street, um, would have the uh, you know, least impact to single family residences. Um, and then finally, on the, you can see kind of in light green, uh, there, there's a small exercise park, uh, correct, right there, that's kind of in close proximity to the sidewalk system and, uh, and kind of nestled in amongst the, uh, the shade of the tree structure. Um, so that's on site. I believe the next page might be the floor plan. We could talk a little bit. Actually, while well, I'm going to floor plan and maybe come back to this view if we can. Okay. That's great. So the program of the building, uh, the, the primary uses is the stage, of course, for the performance spaces. Um, on the left hand side, we have a, a small concession stand uh, with a serving window that's out to the south or the left side of that room. Um, just to the right of that is a storage room uh, and janitor sink. So this storage room will be for equipment, um, you know, any risers or podiums that might need to be out on the stage for any performances or lectures. Uh, the tan area is the open, open um, stage itself, uh, which is open air, lots of ventilation uh, from front to back, left to right. Uh, and then on the right side of the stage, we have a small electric room two group restrooms, uh, one male, one, uh, one for women. Uh, these are fully accessible ADA compliant restrooms um, that's providing uh, three fixtures in each uh, as well as three sinks. And then just to the right of that, there are two smaller uh, family restrooms that are accessed from the, the north side of the building, those two doors that, that go to the right there. And again, those are fully accessible um, family restrooms. Um, access to the stage, there are, I'm sorry. Back there. Oh. Yep, <laughs> no problem. Um, so there are access points at the back of the stage. You see those black lines, those are steps uh, that come up onto the stage. The stage is um, uh, two feet uh, above, above the ground. Uh, so there's steps in the back. There's also steps on the front of the stage that, that, um, that wrap basically the front the front leading edge of the stage. And then there's a ramp that's on the right side for accessibility. So it's um, fully, fully wheelchair accessible up to the stage platform. All right, and then we can look at the rendering. So the design of the building itself and how it looks is, is, is really a, a reflection of the program. Um, so the stage is the most prominent, most important feature on this building. Uh, and given its, its importance in the center, uh, which is why the roof of that center area has popped up just a little bit higher. So one, it gives the importance of the stage. Um, it also helps with the, with the acoustics of the angle and actually reflecting sound out toward the spectator area. Um, the two sides um, on, on either, either side are, are are subdued. There, there's not a lot of embellishment really to focus your attention on the stage and the performances that are occurring there. Um, there is, from the design aspect, there is a lot of compatibility with the existing buildings, existing government buildings um, in the town of Windermere. Um, notice the use of white, um, uh, the government buildings being white with uh, lap siding. Um, so the um, the white you see there on the front walls would be would be a similar lap siding aesthetic. Um, that would tie in with those other buildings. Uh, the roof lines have uh, are a single slope to the back, um, and they feature extensions of the trusses or, or rafters that stick out uh, that are painted white, um, much like other um, uh, other Florida vernacular architecture um, of large overhangs, exposed rafter tails um, in in that regard. And let's see. Also, what the, the show here is the one that required the rotary emblem and the healthy West Orange emblem here, where it goes. We'll cite that, but that's also 
a provision of the grant. Mm -hmm. And at the front of the stage, you could see those steps um, kind of stepping up onto that platform there in the front. Uh, the ramp is on the right hand side um, that uh, that is sloping down. And um, again, steps are in the back. OK, I think we will come back to any questions there. Next thing we want to talk about was the design standards. Uh, John, do you want to talk about these and, and redline version that we provided or do you want me to do it? I, I can do it, and and I don't necessarily know if we have to go line item by line item in that. Um, just being respectful to the council's time and everybody on the call, they are part of now. You know the the public record. Um, I kept them in a red line version just so you all could see the variances between <clears throat> our design guidelines that we had in the original concept through our committee, as well as the new design guidelines that we have done relative to the budgeting purposes for budgeting purposes. Um, everything that's pretty much redlined in here has been, you know, thoroughly vetted both through our maintenance side to make sure that we're not getting anything that, you know, isn't properly maintainable um, and well as costing side. So um, if you concentrate on the red areas, those are the differences, but some of them are more enhancements. Some of them are actually acceptances with a, with a, redu redu with a reduction in cost, but uh, Generally speaking, it's kind of the similar process that we went through with the town facilities where you have a great concept and then you have to go back and massage it to try and get it back into budget. And so that's actually what we're doing there. And I'll open it up if you guys have any questions after reading it or you know, post any of this conversation if you want to have personal calls and you know, I can walk you through some of the changes. And yeah, with that, um... Give you an idea of one of the things. Also, we're giving you a budget. Basically, what we're saying is right now we're still on the schematic side. Um, we're working on this budget. The numbers are moving every time we look at the uh, budget. Uh, but even as they move within these categories, we're still within the million dollar budget. We're still meeting that goal, everything else. Uh, we're using the contingency funds. Um, to use some of those things and also refining the estimates for the projection equipment and the concession the stand and everything else like that. Um, schedule, Richard, do you want to talk about schedule a little bit? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So schedule wise, uh, basically, if we get if we were to get approval from the town and we can continue moving forward, uh, Hunt and Brady will take, uh, you know, probably a month to two months to complete the design, and then we would go into permitting. Permitting would take approximately two months, and then we would do the construction. We figured the construction somewhere around four months. So uh, literally, uh, you know, if we got going, I think an eight to 10 month schedule is what we projected overall. That would put us in the completion. Basically, what we talked about, Richard, was somewhere of next year, right? That's correct. So, and with that, you know, I'll open up to questions. Any of you all you might have any questions about what you see or what you've seen. Thank you very much, Mr. Brooks. Appreciate you and your team. What we're going to do now is because this is a workshop for the town council to be able to ask you all questions. So I'm going to open it up to them and if they have any questions of you all, and then we'll get to the citizens and residents after that. So town council. Ah, there we go. Mr. Davitt, you are first. Awesome. Hey, um, team, we, we had a couple of emails come across and looking at this rendering um the comments in the in the emails hold true and i agree with them it seems like the pavilion doesn't quite match the architectural uh cues from uh town hall and then the new town of windermere admin facility and police department um was that taken into account and and if so what where where are we pulling the, the cues from i think what i can address and tom can talk a little bit more about it but I, the rendering probably doesn't give enough detail to it, uh, but basically we're putting a masonry building and then putting a hardy board siding to match the other town facilities. And Tom, if you can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that's that's correct. Um, yeah, so the the building form is really a, a function of of the program and you know the stage and the and the uses on either side. The aesthetic 
um, with the siding and the materials that are being used is really the connection and the tie to the other buildings with the with the white siding. Um, you know, some of the some of the the the, the roof structure, um, the metal roof. Um, you know, that would that would be a metal roof that is sloping uh, in one direction toward the back. Um, we're also on this building trying to break down this scale a little bit. That's the use of kind of the horizontal lines between the white area and the gray area, as you see on the rendering, to kind of break up that elevation. So it's not so, you know, just just one material, one you know, siding over the whole thing, but to kind of break it down a little bit and make it more to scale for uh, that's more appropriate uh, for this building. Did you consider um, potentially putting a gabled roof on, say at a 75%, 25% um, along the two lower sections while maintaining the, the roof line of the, the stage area? Because I, I believe that would match the uh, existing facilities a little bit better than the current design. Yeah, we did, we did study several different uh, roof line uh, options. Um, one that had a, a kind of one roof line across the entire entire building, both the stage and the areas um, to the side. Um, this option that we see here has the broken roof where the stage is elevated higher to kind of give it that more importance. Um, to give a gable end on that is not one that we investigated, a gable end over the stage. Um, on one regard, it may be detrimental to the acoustics. Um, that kind of single slope angling outward is really is really functionally for you know the performers and, and getting that sound and uh, you know uh, reflected out on toward the audience. If you had a gable roof structure in there with a, a more elaborate truss structure, kind of forming that gable end, um, that would be that would be incredibly difficult to to manage the acoustics of that. Yeah, and I was thinking more over the um, restroom area and concession area have a, you know, a hip along those those long linear pieces and have the, I see. you know, front portion, say the front 25% of that roof pitch forward while the remaining 75% in the back pitch to the rear um, mm -hmm. to kind of take on the cues of, of the new town facilities. I see. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tom, let me just address that too, because I think there's a longer history here than, you know, you, you being involved in what we gave you as the committee. So the committee, when we had that um, back in 2019, and that was the committee that Stephen Withers and I were on, we actually did a lot of investigation that with the early Hunt and Brady team, Tony, okay. um, and actually looked at those kind of features and it really, and that's actually the original one that we approved. So this was the one that kind of burst out of the committee. And you get, and you know better than anybody, you know, renderings are these, you know, pieces of eye candy that don't <laughs> tell you what you're getting, but, you know, you kind of get to see what it is. And that this is actually probably a nicer rendering than the, the other one relative to the level of detail and the point of perspective that, that you're looking at versus mm -hmm. this one. You know, and your camera views make a huge difference in just, where you place it for the view shed. So we we actually did do a lot of research and looking at different, you know, varying roof lines and everything else. And I think ultimately when you look at this one versus where we ultimately are ending up, it does kind of present itself consistently with not necessarily the architecture, but the building materials. And again, the architecture of this building is really being driven by the program in which it's being utilized for. And so you end up with a lot of slanted roofs and slope versus gable. Um, it, that's really more history for you guys to understand because what we approved, that what we approved, took a long time to get there to approve it. And so what we were trying to do is stay with what was initially approved by town council and the majority of the residents. Hey, John, I, I thank you for that input. I, I also think that you know, when we, we approved that, I know that we all made a special note that, hey, this is a little bit more, I, I think I think that original rendering, rendering looks really cool. I don't think it matches our downtown. So right. I think that was the issue. And we we made council was pretty, pretty note uh, heavy on that in terms of saying, hey, you know, yeah, the concept's there, you know, but uh, definitely we want to make sure that it that it blends uh, and, and, you know, takes on the cues from the surrounding downtown area and uses a you know, the, 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 the um, master plan pieces that, that we have established there. So 
Um, I think, I think the so other it thing. definitely it definitely is a it's it's much less modern looking than than the initial one. I think part of the challenge that maybe some of us are having with that with the current rendering is that it is it might just be an angle thing or whatever. It looks very squatty. Um, I don't know that it's that way in real life. You know, I mean, this is that's this always is a problem. Just, with it, rendering. That's, but that's why we're here. Let's get all the input and you know, you guys have the skills and the abilities to to uh, you know process some of that feedback. And um, I think that it's it, it's probably a you know a scale issue in this particular photo. Yeah, having sat through many of these at Universal Studios, the camera location in which you take your point of view or perspective view of the rendering makes a whole hill of beans difference. And we, on the previous one that you saw, which was the one that we approved earlier, that, you know, I, I, it was painstakingly me trying to figure out what's the best perspective to really get the visual for what we're talking about. And then you right. look at another one and it's kind of a little higher, right? And so it has a different perspective to it. But I also think it's important too, when you think about, when we when we are looking at new buildings and architecture, you know, it, we had a lot of pushback on the design of the lobby because it was almost too contemporary for what we were doing. But it actually made this kind of transitional period between two buildings that were kind of more in character to the older fashioned buildings that we have in our town with this modern day, you know, kind of connectivity through the lobby that had a more contemporary modern look to it. And, you know, that's been, you know, accepted very well because I think it makes a really cool connection and also kind of brings us into maybe a little bit of the 21st century. So absolutely. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. You know, and I mean, I think that, you know, we'll get we'll get a lot of public input tonight, I'm sure, as we you know, but I think now tonight is the the good opportunity to get that public input in terms of right. how how traditional, how modern, how you know, how colonial, how whatever we want to be and all of this. Um, but I mean, I think that, uh, you know, part, I do think that the, just that, that, that rendering, um, I don't think the design is not, is not on point potentially, but the, just the angle, it, it just looks, it, it just looks kind of flat. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. no, no, no criticism, just, you know, Hey, we're just talking to make sure we get all the good input. Yeah. So, and so. I think too, one of the things, if you notice the new rendering, which has kind of got the rafter tail kind of feel to it is similar to town hall, which has the rafter mm -hmm. tail look to it. Again, yeah. remembering that this is more of a uh, kind of contemporary use, you know, because, of, and so we're trying to combine design materials as well as use proper use for functionality for performances with sloped roofs and looking at sound and acoustics and everything else. Yep, absolutely. Sorry, Tony, didn't mean to cut you off, brother. I, and I know Bill's got his hands up too. No worries. That's, uh, I'll turn it over to Bill. He, I'm sure he's got a ton of questions too. I only have two. Uh, I, I do kind of agree with the comments about, um, you know, it, it doesn't match the uh, architectural style of what we've got in town. But, you know, it's it's better than, you know, original. We do have the open rafter tails um, and maybe maybe there's a way to uh, enhance that with some some um, <clears throat> cosmetic architectural features. I don't know, columns or something that that might mimic something that we've got on town hall or uh or the new town facilities um so yeah i understand the concept and uh, one of the comments i heard earlier was that the stage is the most prominent feature and from my viewpoint it is not the the, the section that's on the right hand side of the building is the most prominent feature from this angle from me looking at it and i'm just wondering if there's any way to break up that facade so that it um so that it isn't so prominent. Um, that might help, you know, with with the the overall look of it. Cause you know, some people that I've talked to about this, they they think it kind of has a sterile look to it. Um, so you know, I don't know if there's a way to visually break up that facade, uh, either stepping it back halfway through or you know, some kind of, you know, even paint or some some kind of color uh, difference. Yeah, I think uh, one of the things, Bill, that we're missing is probably some uh, lower level landscaping that's probably more, uh, you know, eight, 
six, eight foot tree height kind of things that actually break up that facade from a landscaping perspective. Yeah, so exactly. that really, to be honest with you, to your point, we want the focus to be on the stage, not on a big wall. And then secondarily, I always get nervous when we show points of view and perspectives on renderings because, yeah. you know, this was, this was really a bad choice on angle because you're staring at a big blank wall. If, yeah. if the perspective view is moved closer to the original perspective that we did on the rendering, right. it would have drawn your eye not more towards the stage and not towards this big wall. But there, there are things that we can look at through the design, whether it's architectural or whether it's landscaping, that really allows us to you know, streamline the focus towards the purpose of it, which is not necessarily bathrooms, but you know, performances. Right. The bathroom yeah, I think, use. I know. think a single tree right in the middle of that white wall would, would change the uh, perspective. Well, even if there was a couple of crepe myrtles or something along that wall that kind of yeah. broke it up, you know, so, and we'll mm -hmm. look at that with the landscaping. And I think that's what, I think the reason that we didn't do that is because we wanted to make sure that you guys were comfortable with the architecture and the design of the building without hiding it too much. Yeah. But then knowing that we yeah. can always drop back in the design to soften the blows a little bit on the look. Yeah, I, I think it's yeah, I think it's ninety percent there. Um, it just needs some some detail. My other comment was about the pocket park. Um, can you go to the site plan, please? So the location of that pocket park um, is not good. That space is very often used for. Um, uh, pretty much every event that we have, the 5K, the Windermere Wine and Dine, the uh, even the 9-11 uh, celebration. Not not this view, the, the other view that shows. You're talking shows, about the little exercise park, correct? Bill? Yeah, that shows okay. the pocket park. Can you go to that view? That so, yeah, that one. So this little pocket park, is there any way to put that behind the stage? I mean, even, yes. even yes. looking at the... Um, yep. The hey, Bill. Satellite. I'm sorry. Council, Councilman Martini. Yes. I I feel like did we not have a discussion? We might have to go back and check the record on this. And, it, and this yeah. might might take some some discussion with um, you know the funding partners and, and all those involved, but I felt like we had a discussion about incorporating additional um, exercise equipment, you know over at Central Park to enhance what was there and, and you know, maybe like put some signage up so people would know that yeah, you could go so, yeah. to the park. And there's a, you know, a, a plethora of really cool equipment and then add to that. And, yeah, I, thought, uh, I thought so too. Um, did we have that talk? Uh, we, and it may just be something we need to, uh, you know, to work out with all the partners to make sure that they um, feel good about that. We, yeah. we did discuss it, Mayor. Um, it was originally, I was understanding, it was going to be pushed further west. But we need, on this site plan, we need to locate the septic system mm -hmm. to get an idea of how far you can push that back. And is there any room to push, you know, between trees? What are we losing because of disease and age? But also, what are we taking out? But also... I feel like that pocket park has gotten sucked right up into the front when, you know, originally we were told it was going to go in the back. And that was I, a part uh, of it. I mean, I know that, yeah, I, I, there were several discussions on it. I think that, I mean, this is just my take. And again, we'll have to talk to the partners, but I, you know, my, my gut feel was that we were, that this was not the best place for this particular feature. We understand why the feature is important. And we wanted to highlight that hopefully maybe in a, with all of the other exercise equipment that we have um, to enhance that. And hopefully that would be possible and something that we could, we could show the value of. Um, and it would not, it would be a comprehensive array of uh, exercise equipment rather than kind of a sampling, because I think that's what this is. It's to encourage people to, you know, to get active and, and, and all of the Healthy West Orange concepts have, um, you know, some piece of, of, of health and, and fitness in, involved in them. So um, I, I think it could be a conversation. I agree that this particular spot that it's in is, 
it's problematic just because as we condense these items in and bring that bring that public use space tighter and tighter, we're going and, and our events become success more successful and bigger and bigger, you know, you're you're you've got some competitive nature uh, fighting there. So we want to make sure that we that we preserve uh, especially those really important areas behind town hall, um, you know, for something that is really special, heavily used. Um, and, um, you know, maybe there's there's a, a better place for the exercise equipment, whether it's on this particular site or, like I said, if, if we could show them Central Park and say, hey, this we can make this even better, that may be something that that may be a good idea. Um, sorry, Bill, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I, I did. I apologize. No, that's all right. You get, yeah, right. We're, I think we're all on the same page. I mean, I'm looking at the satellite view on Google Maps and and it shows that sidewalk there and where the pocket park shows on this on this diagram there's like five or six tents there the the whole site is, is littered with tents so i mean every i every function that we have that i can recall even you know at best there are there are tents all over the place so yeah um i think it'd be better served to to move it across the street at, at fifth and oakdale or you know some other suitable place and andy did mention uh trees um the tree board is is discussing uh, replanting town square area because we've lost a lot of trees. Obviously with the hurricane, we've lost, I don't know, 30 plus uh, heritage oak trees. And, um, and we're gonna lose a few more for this project, but, but they're discussing replanting um, that whole uh, area there. And we'll get with, with public works and, and everyone else to make sure we're putting them in the right space and, and replenishing our canopy. Hey, Bill, one thing, I, I th and, and, and to your point, you know, this is really kind of just an early concept for yeah. the, the pocket park, so to speak, or the exercise park. I, I know at one time, you know, Byron and I were talking about it being more linear uh, behind, you know, where you're coming off a of fifth and it becomes like this little linear park behind the, um, within the trees. What we don't want to do is get out into that, uh, you know, overflow parking area, because I think that is hugely beneficial to the town, especially as events begin to grow. Um, so it's kind of protecting that, but also utilizing peripheral places around the parking behind the building. Um, but if, and I don't know, I'll have to look at the grant to make sure that it, whether it has to be in close proximity to this investment or whether it can be anywhere. But that was the original request, John, that it was in close proximity. Yeah, and I think that's what it is. And I think I think I think the thing that we need to make sure tonight with you guys, because the building is the most important, and then we can drop back with um, with our team, and we can actually also meet with you know Bill and a couple folks uh, within the town to look at varying concepts about how we actually make this kind of linear exercise track work. I like it being in close proximity because it one just gives us another really cool little exercise thing as people are walking and you know going through town it's just one another little area that they can deviate off of and do it and i think that's kind of grant centric to what we were talking about and john let me just mention that a very wise person with the initials rs just mentioned to me that maybe the west maybe the trail that we're doing might be a good spot for this that could be if, yeah if, if that's possible but i think i think the question here tonight john is if it has to be in close proximity because of the grant to this particular facility is town council okay then with moving it behind the stage rather than leaving it where it is on this diagram i think that's a a question to kind of flush out with them tonight could they live with that yeah i and i agree and i but i also think that um if we want to move forward you know the intent tonight would be to allow us to move forward to the you know again we have a couple other additional stop gaps with you guys you know one at 45 and then one at 90 percent but also we can probably provide i think we, we're talking about two different aspects one is making sure that we're good solid on the building because that's the long pole in the tent and we have many opportunities to rework how that linear park works in context with the grant and then provide you know through hunt and brady and mccree some various options that work within the budget to allow us to figure that park out because i think that might be 
a, a, a little longer pull in the tent for us on, on getting through the design to make sure that the town likes where that's at. I think tonight, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, the footprint of the building, the design and architecture of the building, one being consistent with what we've already, you know, basically approved, um, allows us after this evening to begin to go into the 45% CDs. We can, if, if that makes sense, if you guys are not comfortable with what we've shown tonight and you would say, hey, I think we need one more workshop. What I don't want to do is have the um, linear um, little pocket park exercise thing drive the fact that we're holding up the building construction until we figure out that because we can make that work. We can have a special workshop on just what, what are we doing with the exercise component? John, I, I don't think that the, yeah, I, I don't think that that portion, you know, and, and last council feels incredibly strong. Uh, I don't, I don't think that the, I think we all agree the current placement isn't ideal, but it's not something that would hold us up from moving forward. Not a with showstopper. The, with the brick yeah. and mortar, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, I think the placement could be, I want to say strongly, I think the placement doesn't work, but it's not going to yeah. stop us from designing the building and moving forward. I, I think that's the piece that that you're looking for. Um, yeah, thank I do you. have a couple yeah. couple building questions if uh, Councilperson Martini has all his questions answered. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm finished. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Um, so a couple building questions. Um, the so the the actual placement John, I know that you, I'm assuming everyone worked really hard on that. And, and it's, if, if, it, if we can't do this, we can't do it. it. Are we pushed back as far as we can possibly go without, you know, negative ramifications? Yes. If we start pushing it was so I, I think it's important that if you look at um, where the concessions is the stage and maybe the men's room and a portion of the women's room, that's almost the exact same footprint as the community building. Okay. If we, if we push it back any farther or we say, hey, let's not even put it here. Let's put it in that back lot. Then then you're going to have to take down all the trees because you have zero sight lines. Yeah, so I don't want to do that. I just, yeah, so I just what want we, to know we're as far back as we could go within reason. Yeah, that's all. Yes, without without disrupting a lot of the trees. And because of where its location is, there are a few live oaks in the back that initially Actually, we thought we were going to have to take out, but now we don't. And so that's what Eric and I've been working on with the arborist. And so, you know, think of this as kind of a squeeze play. So we're trying yep. to figure out what's the best way to do it, but yet still have. And if you look at, you know, when you think about the center access of the point in which we're looking at the stage, it actually is a really good center access point between where most of the um, the folks are during food trucks and large events and, and absolutely so that, i just yeah i just wanted to it's a little hard to tell from the renderings whether you know the exact placement in terms of where the existing um or, or the you know the the existing community former library former someone's house um yeah, <laughs> yeah you know so you had a yeah, lot of that's, that's helpful i just want to make sure we're pushed back as far as we can go um without compromise and and that's fine for me and, so, and if you look at if you look at this rendering here or the site plan that we kind of look, what we were trying to do is kind of make it this like backdrop catcher's mitt mm -hmm. for the downtown events. So when you come into the downtown area, you've got you know all this event space on the basketball courts and you got everything else, and you see how the axis kind of comes off the back corner of the yep. town hall and kind of wraps around, and then the restrooms end up in this very central core kind of location. But yet also the concessions do as well. And so it kind of formulates this kind of catcher's mitt for experience. And uh, it, so, you know, it's funny because a little town history. So you may remember that there was a ball field there as well. Yeah, there you um, go. And, and City Walk has the same arc. <laughs> so the other piece that I'm looking at is. Can someone walk me through. In layman's terms, how we know this is the best way to contain sound from going backwards especially to um forest um what you know what's the science on that why is it open in the back that's interesting to me is that you know i'm just curious can can so we're definitely going to get questions on that i want us all to be able to to say with confidence that we're doing everything we can to contain the sound and push it out in the right direction we would 
we will be looking at that uh, in the design because right now I think we need to push that up further in that back wall. That's what we've talked about in the design, but that'll be part of the design development as we go forward is look at the acoustic see a area back in here. It's open. See how much we close that up to make sure we don't we're still get airflow, still get the way the area is uh, ventilated to a certain extent, but also our sound transmission is minimized. So is there, obviously there's science to this. Who's going to, who's going to make sure that we are, um, doing our best to make sure that, you know, we're doing everything we can uh, within reason and, and, you know, affordability and all of that to make sure that we've, we've got that accomplished. I think Richard can address some of that, but I'm gonna be looking to Hunt and Brady as our design professionals. Yeah, I can, I can speak a little bit to it. I mean, um, you know, certainly there's an option of bringing on board um, a professional acoustician who could run calculations, uh, you know, but, in order to do that, it's really having an understanding of what are the sound systems that are going to be used on this, what are the different performances, um, and then they could run a they could run a sound model to demonstrate that. Um, you know that you know the, a professional acoustician is not has not been on brought on board for this. Now, you know this is an outdoor amphitheater, so I mean we're it, it's not going to be a soundproof enclosure that sure. there's 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 not going to be sound leaking onto adjacent properties. I think as we were looking at it, it's what is the most ideal um, position and orientation to minimize uh, negative effects to to private residences. Um, and this this orientation uh, works. Um, the comment about the back wall, I think, is a good one that we can definitely look at that. I think we do want to kind of maintain a little some ventilation through there, um, so it doesn't become a stagnant space where you know you start getting a lot of you know mosquitoes and birds and you know or all kinds of other things in there. I think having some ventilation is a is a good idea. But the actual height of that wall, we could we could definitely look at a little bit closer. Um, and mm -hmm. cl close it up a little bit. Um, also, all the trees back behind are definitely helpful in deadening a lot of that sound transfer that might go that might go to the west. Okay, I do think that it is something that you know, and and, and again, I'm, I don't know that I'm saying we need a uh, you know concert hall acu uh, acoustician. So that's a good word. Um, <laughs> and I do want us to have ventilation under there. So you know, I mean, I do understand the limitations. Um, but if there's something that we need to do or there's some things that we can do there within reason to, you know, double down on making sure or doing our best, let's say that, yeah, doing our best to make sure that we're pushing that sound forward um, as much as possible. Because one of the things here, um, you know, compared to some other places is that it's it's quite quiet in the evening. So if there's music at Town Hall, you know, it's super easy for, you know, several blocks away for you to to hear that. And um, and I, I'm I'm not under the impression that we're not going to have any noise. Don't get me wrong. I just want to be able to you know look at everybody with a straight face and say we've done all we can to uh, make this make sense. The the current setup that we have with an open stage is much worse. So I know this is going to be better. I just want to make sure that we take this opportunity to just do our darndest on it uh, and make sure that 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 we're keeping that front of mind. Um, and then I've got a couple questions, and and these are these are going to sound weird. But they're based on experience that we have had. So as you can see with basketball courts here, this is also a, a heavy recreational area. And we have had some pretty significant issues with roofs um, being kind of an attractive nuisance. So I want to make sure that when we do the roof lines, um, that we are being thoughtful as to how people can climb on top of those roofs or if they can climb on top of those roofs. Um, because people will, they do it every food truck um, it, with the existing building. So, uh, and then we have several other areas where it's been an issue as well. So just to make sure that we're thinking in that light, um, you know, and there's various ways to do that. Uh, you know, we can, we can make sure that we try to keep those, those, uh, those roofs a little higher maybe. Um, you know, obviously that wall in the back looks like something you could climb up and then climb up onto the roof, depending on the uh the, the width of the roof and i know this sounds a little nutty but we could put um, we could put one of those roller things on it yeah oh, yeah, yeah 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 just like a <laughs> like like some of those video games that the kids play with the, they try to get me to play where i'm in space trying to uh 
get to the next obstacle. But, um, you know, it's just okay. something I want us to think about because it has been an issue. I think um, that roof's higher than you think, though. I mean, the only okay. way that's up there I is trust you, John. I just want to make sure. Had a ladder. Yeah, no, but that, that is a good point. And so we'll <laughs> we'll certainly make sure because um, you and I have learned a lot at Lake Street. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a good point, but it is a good point. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, the other thing I was thinking is I, um, as we plan this out further, um, I want to make sure that we look at our options for placement of external electrical as well as uh, water. Um, just uh, so this particular um, pavilion can also be used in support of other events. Um, and that can save us from having things that stick up uh, in the middle of, uh, you know, dark walking areas. Um, also want us to think about how we handle lighting um, for that area and maybe use this to help us with our lighting challenges downtown. Um, and, you know, and again, avoid some of those, um, you know, dark walking areas, just trying to, just trying to be like super proactive so we don't come back and, you know, have to retrofit or anything. Um, and then, my last thought is, could you go back to the floor plan? So the, I was, so. Andy, can you zoom in a little bit on that? There you go. Okay. So my only ask is that we may consider as well so that storage area, I don't have I don't have an exact scale on this. So um, we may want to maybe multi-purpose that storage area or something, so we can have the opportunity. Um, you know, like we sometimes like if uh, there's dance or something like that, they'll want to do quick costume changes and, and uh, having a place where they can do that real quick and jump right on stage is is a real benefit. Mm -hmm. um, makes things really smooth. Um, I, I don't know if it's, you know, that may be too big an ask, but just be thinking in that direction. If there's a little space there uh, where we could do something like that, um, that would be, that would be really good. You know, it's, um, it's usually like have, a quick change place. Yeah. We actually talked about that, you know, during the initial design phase and I, and I like where you're going. Cause I think that's important. And one of the reasons why we had the larger bathrooms, which you could mm -hmm. actually lock off. And then we also had the individual, you know, family bathrooms which allow yep. quick change and that kind of stuff. And sure. if you zoom in on the, the, the bathrooms, like at the low wall, we actually built a wing wall out beyond the, um, the bathroom doors so that if you did have actors or people that wanted to change in those rooms and then come okay. around the back to get back on stage. So thinking of performances and those kind of things, you know, awesome. and I always looked at the storage in this place is not the storage for the town to right. store things there, but it's really a storage place for that event, right? Yep. And so however you want to use that room is how you want to use the room because yep. it's always empty for the event. Perfect. Yeah. And then last and final for me, and uh, I'll turn it over to the others. I'm sure you have questions as well. Um, it, and again, it, it may be too soon, but I want to make sure that we're integrating our our electronics and projection and sound uh, with, with our acoustics and with our containment as well. Um, and then putting in something that is, uh, you know, kind of smart and idiot proof. So, so it, it, you know, becomes well used and, and, uh, you know, gives us, gives us what we need. So let's think about projection, whether we do, you know, rear projection, that type of thing, um, you know, uh, because you can do, I think with with having the right people involved to talk about little things that have to do with the stage, you can have things serve more than one purpose much easier, and that's going to be more efficient um, and and you know better on the dollars and cents of this and uh, make it a lot more usable. I, I think you know we're we're on our way. Um, I certainly want to make sure to take two seconds to thank you know Byron and Norma and the Rotary and uh, Healthy West Orange. Um, John and, and and all all you guys on the design team for helping us get here. Um, you know, just I don't I don't want to be remiss and uh, not say uh, how appreciative we are um, in, in all of this. And also, just you know, remember these are just thoughts and ideas. So we get 
you know, I think we've gotten better and better at this. You know, we know what to ask now a little better. So yeah. Um, with that, I'll shut up and uh, turn it over to either Andy or Mandy. I'm not sure which uh, put their little hand icon up first. It's Councilman Williams first. <laughs> you're, you're doing a great job, Sue, uh, second mayor. I love it. Second mayor. I'm going to keep training her. Yes, please do. I need all the help I can get. Andy, you're on mute. All right. Sorry, guys. Um, first, I'm really disappointed at what we were brought. Um, the lack of detail, um, scale, perspective. I mean, looking at the somewhat site plan, you see part of the basketball court, not both of them. You can't see all of town hall or the, I have a hard time placing this on, on that block. And the overall map view gives you an idea, but the big question was the stuff behind where the trees are in what we call our, over, our overflow parking. How's that being used in, uh, how's that gonna benefit our neighbors along forest? Um, along with the detail part, how, how high are these roofs on the front edge and in the back? Tom, can you address that? Yeah, let me, um, I have another drawing on my other screen here. I'm uh, pulling up right now. Cool, thank you. So on the low roofs on the sides from the ground level, because the ground is two foot lower than the stage height, mm -hmm. um, the front edge of the roof is about 14 feet above the ground. Okay. And then at the stage from the ground, it's about 19 feet. Okay. Yeah, the, that sounds about. Okay. It's, the rendering looks so low and squatty and without anything in the front for scale, it looks... I mean, it looks like in the back, I could crawl up onto the roof and walk around. Um, and I think the mayor had a good point on that. It's it, just lack of lack of the detail. Uh, our first rendering, at least, they'd stuck some, some people out front so we could kind of get an idea of how tall it is. And, you know, they had the little keystones all over the front to kind of break up that big wall. Um, the mayor covered... The mayor and uh, Councilman Martini covered a lot that I had to question about the park, the trees, where the septic is, how far we can push it back, because this feels like we've crammed it in here to make it work, um, in, in my opinion. Uh, do, what is the distance between the front steps and the basketball court of the stage? Saying from here to here. Yep. Yep. Tom, I'm gonna let you deal with that one if you can. He's doing it now. No worries. And, and, and part of my question was because I thought we were having this thing staked out prior to this meeting. I thought that was in discussion before that we were going to stake out this building so we could actually see how it fits. It was not not a uh, requirement that I knew about, sir. Okay, no worries. I, I thought I'd heard it discussed earlier. And Andy, I didn't either. But just remember, you know, for us, we're in the schematic phase at this point. I, yeah, I understand. So, so for us, it's, um, you know, the general purpose even even roughing it i mean without the overlay of the old of the old community room uh you know yeah i'm trusting okay. what you're telling me well this is where it fit I get i'm it. looking at the hedges on the on the north side going okay that gap is where the sidewalk so comes that may from. be that may be a good exercise as follow-up for the team to provide an overlay of the existing community room to give you guys perspective yeah, because I've had a lot of residents ask about how close this thing's going to be to the basketball court. How close is it to the edge of the ramp for um, town hall? You know, of what space are we losing it is it has been the big concern yeah. uh, of open space. 
Yeah, and sorry, I was muted before, but approximately no approximately about 45 to 50 feet from okay. the front of stage to basketball court. Okay, that's what I figured it would be. I would just, it's, like I said, it's just hard. I know you guys are in concept, but it's just so hard to get scale um, when everything is, we can't see the entirety of the other buildings either to kind of go, okay, it's, it's the width of the basketball court and then some um that's that's where i've been frustrated you know we got i'm so used to getting you know 200 200 page uh, agendas not 18 but only three of them have uh information uh on them uh is the roof do we know uh roof material yet and on the trusses are those going to be wood or steel richard can you address that Yes, so there'll be some form of a metal. Okay. Uh, those trusses. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And, and, the, and the intent is, Andy, that the roof will match similar to our new town facility. So it's okay, a metal. metal. That's yeah. what I'd hope. I mean, I would hope we'd strive for something if we can budget it to make it happen. Um, and then the trusses all being uh, steel. Uh, I, the intent for me and my biggest pushback was long-term maintenance like yep, we did with the mine. Facilities. so everything's hardy plank steel block very very yep. little wood <laughs> love it thank yeah. you that's all i got i'm just you know struggling with perspective and scale is, is my biggest thing and then the park being pushed way forward when you know i was always understanding it was more linear in the back where we have our parking but we were making room for it so mm -hmm. um that's all i got but thank you Andy, can, this is Cindy. Um, hey, Cindy. hey um, it may be helpful, Tom, if you tell them how many people performers can fit on the stage, that might give some perspective. And then how many people can fit in the space in front of the stage? Because I know we've calculated that. Okay. Yeah, that would definitely help. Thanks, Cindy. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, we did. We did an exercise of laying out um, laying out a small orchestra um, on the stage. Look to, at the to... screen right now, Tom. Yes, there it is. Mm -hmm. um, so, so this this is a forty piece orchestra um, with you know conductor in the center there, um, yeah. which you know is is you know it's about thirty feet wide, about twenty five feet deep. Um, so, you know we you know for for the size that we're looking at here, we we understood that would be an adequate size for whatever performances might might come to this uh, venue. Okay. Um, the the open space in front, kind of the green space um, uh, that might be in, you know visitors in attendance here, um, we're calculating approximately. Um, let me see. I believe it was three thousand. Was it three? Wait a minute. No, it was like four hundred seventy-five. Uh, four. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think it was 3,000 square feet. That's the number that was sticking in my head. So okay. that that equated to about 450 people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I think what's important, and I'm sorry I keep chiming in, but you know, having been on the history of this thing forever, um, one of the things, well, uh, part of our original program was to be able to house um, have 40 orchestra pieces. If the orchestra was bigger, a lot of times you'll see them in front of the stage with the lower percussion instruments and some of some of the other things. So that's where the steps came in, the monument steps that we're adding in the front to allow, you know, extended orchestras to come in or performances that may want to come <laughs> into the crowd. And so that was the purpose of having the monument stairs across the front. And I think in addition to that, we also had to look at what the area was um, from a code perspective, which is where which is where Tom's talking about the 3,000 square feet to allow us to properly code out the amount of potty parity for the restroom sizing. Even though we know if we have larger events, you know, we'll provide additional restroom facilities. But certainly what this design does is provide us way more restrooms than we currently have in the downtown district for the events that we're doing. So we're kind of playing this, you know, back and forth scenario. Well, at the same time, we're playing the back and forth scenario of how this thing sits within the environment. Well, at the same time, we're playing that back and forth to allow us to make sure that we're better today than we 
we're better with this than we are today with the way that we play music in our downtown district. No, I think you guys have done a, an awesome job. It's just, it's like the last, the piece showing the orchestra pieces in the, in the steps and stuff. That's, you know, that's part of the detail that I expected kind of gives us a little bit more information. How, then my last one is with the larger restrooms and stuff, have we gotten through DEP um, for, do we have to expand our septic and our drain field? Um, what's it going to look like? Yeah, that'll actually, that'll actually go through Orange County Health. Right. Uh, on whether or not we need to expand them. And that that's all part of the design process. Right now, we're you know assuming we can reuse the existing septic, but if it has to get enlarged, we'll figure that one out through the permitting process. Um, but we know that based on looking at building code and potty parity, mm -hmm. we had to establish what the viewing shed was to size the restrooms, and that's kind of where we're at. And so that's all part of once you guys agree that, hey, schematically and conceptually, we like this design, that's when we can start going into construction documents and really start answering a lot of your questions. Yeah, thank you. Like I said, I think you guys have done a great job. I know the septic in, you know, that's kind of the, when it comes to the number of your bathrooms and size, it starts to be the uh, tail that wags the dog. Did you just that. go through that or something? Oh, no, I'm never. I don't <laughs> have any experience on that end of it. Yeah. So I'm going to bow out now and leave it to uh, uh, the rest of the council. Mandy, I think you're next. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. This is awesome. And, and I um, echo all the other um, council members. Um, comments and questions. Uh, a lot of them were mine, so um, they got to them before I could, but I do have one question. Has anybody um, contacted anybody from the tree board and parks and recs to get their input? Because I feel like um, they might be um, it, very helpful in some of the design as well and thought process, because I do know that I got some pushback about the stage interfering with a lot of our Parks and Recs events. So now that I can see with, you know, with the orchestra and layout and stuff that helped me see a little better that it's not encroaching. But um, I just curious if, if the chairs have been reached out to, um, they would probably have some um, great insights for you um, just in the process and, and help maintaining that it's not interfering with other events that we have. But yeah. otherwise, thank you, it was a great job. And Mandy, I can, I can address that because yes, um, you know, as the rep for the town, um, I actually had Eric Hoyer, our arborist out in a meeting with Susan. We looked at the building. We got an initial assessment from the design build team on the trees. I had Eric out there. We, we did a little bit of pushback and saying, hey, if we root prune these, we could probably save this one. We could do this one. And so we did that massaging. And then Eric did a final arborist report, which we needed for the demolition package and also for our um, a just general assessment of being good stewards of our town, right? It's just the same thing that I went through at the town facilities. You know, how do we how do we save large oaks and how do we save these kind of things when we start to encroach and put buildings and foundations in? And so um, we spent, gosh, I want to say two or three days together with Susan Carter and um she actually did put an email in as much as she was saddened to see a couple of trees go. One of the things that we want to do is make sure that we um, reestablish trees. And I think Bill indicated that earlier in, in the conversation tonight, that looking at putting in larger trees to supplement what we're taking out and using the right trees. Um, so we're working with Eric on that as well in our landscape design folks through um, this team, um, because that is important to us and to the town. John, I'll just put up the arborist report. Yeah, so just to give the council rest assurance, you know, and you guys have the history with me, I know how important trees are and to the extent that we're gonna work during construction, but also there are certain trees that ultimately do have to come out to be able to allow us to expand and develop and then we look at mitigation 
and then coming back with replanting after the fact. Yeah, and I know you guys did a great job with the town facilities and, and Eric, Eric is a great arborist and he knows, uh, you know, much like you do, John, how we feel about you know, the trees and, and what's necessary to maintain those. So yeah, and he's, and he's, he and I work good together. You know, I push on him, he pushed backs on me. And then ultimately, you know, Susan was there on our walkthrough when we were determining how we were going to establish this arborist report. And um, I think between the three of us, it was a great team and we all came up with great solutions to move forward with um, what our game plan is moving forward. And yeah. I think we kind of saw that a little bit in Susan's, you know, wh where she was, you know, kind of bummed after just coming through a hurricane and losing 30 trees and then losing a few more, but also enlightened by the fact that we're also going to be able to make it even better for the long term. Yeah, I, I understand. And as long as Susan's happy, I'm happy. So <laughs> I know it's a tough goal, but dude, that's my goal in life too. So, All right. you know, thank you. And then the second part of my question has Parks and Recs been, um, you know, spoken with just to get some input from them? Um, I, I'm going to have to defer to Tanya on that one, but I think, um, you know, at Parks and Recs was involved in the early concept when we were at committee level. And this is actually reflective of exactly what we had at committee level. So I'm assuming I just know that, they'll have some say about that little park in the side. Yeah, so. and I, I get that because to be honest with you, this is really the first time I've seen a conceptual version of that. Okay. And I totally agree with what you guys are saying. And I think we owe council and the town a, um, a revised option for what that means and intertwining, intertwining it behind and looking at alternatives because that's not a good location. John, no, if, I, if I may say something, you know, we guessed, honestly, the team um, guessed where this would go, and we apologize. This is not where you guys want it. So any direction y'all want to give us, we will put it where you want it. We yeah. Know where you wanted it. So. Correct, uh, and I think I think I think what we can do, Cindy, is a drop back, um, maybe have like a little meeting. I can have Tanya and I organize that, where um, we get a little feedback from them and how we can be honoring to the grant while at the same time come up with great concepts for what this little exercise park looks like because i do think it's kind of cool that we have these little trails through town like even robert was saying you know we got this new trail we're building we've got the one in central park but if people can scatter throughout the town and hit these little exercise parks that's that answers our call with what we're trying to do with healthy west orange so um Good stab, just missed the mark. We'll figure it out. The reason we're here is to define when we hit stuff or miss stuff. That's why I love workshops. Yes. Well, thank you. I'm finished. I'll pass it on to whoever was next. I think it was Councilperson Davitt or Martini. I'm not sure. Councilman Davitt had his hand up once and then he put it down and he put it back up again. So, Bill, will you let Tony go first? Sure. Yes. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, because you keep you keep answering my questions before I, I get a chance to ask them. That's our job, um, man. Yeah. So, um, what, one one thing I've, I saw, you know, what I think was the schematic uh, set. Uh, John, is there a chance that we could get a copy of that schematic set so we could see the sections and everything? Are you talking about, uh, oh, you're talking about like with the orchestra and those kinds yeah, of things? Yeah, it, yeah. It, sh it showed section and everything else. Could, yeah, is there a and chance I, we can and get, I will get that. that set? Yes, absolutely. You know, one of the things that I always wanted to do is because sometimes we get lost in 200 pages of stuff for the council. And so for me, what I was trying to do is pinprick things that were meaningful to the discussion tonight. But the more detail, we can absolutely get that to you. Yeah, and to Councilman Williams' point, you know, I, you you should almost include that in in the packages going forward. Um, you know, I I kind of geek out on that kind of stuff, as I know you do. So, yeah, so um, you know, it. In, in, include it. It'll help me from uh, you know asking a bunch of a bunch of questions. I can answer myself by looking at the package. Gotcha. Cool. Pour that in, John. Understand that we're still in schematic. That's this drawing I showed you right there. Well, something Hunt and Brady did because we told them 40 is the 
design parameter proved to me, proved to us that it fits. And that's the reason they did this drawing for us specifically. Correct. I, and because that's, that's actually a program, programmatic drawing about yes. making sure that they're fixing our program. I don't know, and Andy, you can answer this question, how much more level of detail do we have with cross sections and those kind of things that show heights of roof structures and that kind of thing? You know, we're kind of in this tweener stage, Tony, of, you know, trying to get through schematic and concept before we go into CDs. So I, I got it. So mark, yeah. mark the drawings as such and let us see it. Yep. Okay. So whatever you guys have at Hunt and Brady that, you know, gives these guys as much information as they can. Um, if you, if we want to issue a supplemental package to you guys, um, I think at the end of the night, what we want to do is um, out of the workshop. And I know workshops aren't voting things, but I think it's important for us to come out of this to say, hey, are you guys comfortable if we move to the 45? Or would you like to have a second workshop where we bring more detail to you? I don't know the answer to that. I was kind of hopeful that we could bring enough stuff to you that we could actually start doing design work and bring a 45% set to you because that's when we can make still make decisions that don't necessarily... We, those are architectural decisions that we can still make at that point in the drawings. And that's where we'll be able to provide you much more detail and probably answer a ton of questions for you. Schematically tonight, I wanted to make sure that you guys were comfortable with generally the location, the fact that it does really align with what the committee has already done and where we are uh, moving forward um, to allow us to go to the second gate, which is bring a set of site plans and construction drawings and cross sections and everything else to you guys. So, but that's totally your call. The grant requires two workshops. If you guys feel you need more information, then you're, you're certainly honored and deserve that. Let me, um, John, let, let me, you know, let's get a little input from the public. Um, I know that uh, several people are interested in um, you know, providing a little input in terms of their thoughts and, and some of them live close there and I want to make sure we hear from them and then I think, you know, we can kind of poll council to see uh, where we are in terms of, um, you know, either moving forward or having an additional uh, workshop or maybe a walkthrough or something like that. But let, let's, uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, if, if Tanya's cool with that, let's uh, go ahead and hear from the public. I saw her nod, so I'm going to take it as a yes. Is that a yes, Tanya? Yes, sir. That's a yes. That's a yes. So right. members of the public want to speak, put your hand icon up. <laughs> and Bill, we will get to you. I see your hand is up. <laughs> Are there any residents who wish to speak this evening? Yes, Mr. I, Withers. I see Stephen. Yep. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Withers. But you're muted, Mr. Withers. There we go. Got it. Okay. Um, my question is, we're putting a septic field behind this building somewhere, probably where there's no trees. And is there any limit? I mean, not over the tank, but you certainly have a, a drain field out there. Is there any limit that you couldn't put the uh, exercise equipment along that area? Uh, yeah, I think the intent, Stephen, is to use the existing septic, and if it has to be increased for the drain field or tank size, that that once we determine that with the health department, um, that that's the intent yeah. because it does service existing restrooms. And then I understand, but you have a drain field out there uh, that is in the back there. Yeah, it's it's where the trees are not. And you're not going to park over it. So I'm wondering if you couldn't actually just have some exercise equipment on top of it. You could. And, and um, the actual. Uh, can I help you with that question? Yeah. <laughs> so um, when we were doing playground equipment at Windermere Recreation Center, they didn't want us to put playground equipment or anything even in the on top of the drain field. OK, that was my question. <laughs> yeah, correct. But I think what where we know where the drain field is, um, we've actually done a, we've looked at the layout of that. And I think Byron and I were looking at that 
that affords us a place to kind of eke around it, but yet not impede into the parking. So I think there's a solution there. We just got to figure it out. Okay. Thank you. Brandy, would you like to go? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, I mean, wow, that was a ton of information. I have a, a lot, I had a lot of the same comments um, that other people did. Um, I would add that, and, and I mean, it sounds like that, that little exercise thing is going to move, but that's really close to the memorial that's there and to the, to the library itself. And I know, you know, being the mom of a little one that kids already play all over that, you know, when they're coming in and out of the library. And I mean, I understand it's exercise equipment, but I'm talking like two-year-olds and three-year-olds. So I think a little bit further set back would be good because, you know, it's going to turn into a jungle gym for those kids. And that's kind of really not the intent. And it's easy for little kids to get hurt on that kind of equipment because they really don't understand, depending on what it is, um, how it actually works and moves. Um, <laughs> even I don't sometimes, like me and my daughter, we kind of both smacked our head on something one time. So that's just yeah. something from that perspective. Um, we all agree that that is not the location. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, in terms of, I mean, I do feel like it, it is a little bit weird because when you look at the rendering in the agenda packet, you can kind of see the hardy board siding and whatever on it, but then like what's, you know, in the, the size of the screen, I guess that we're looking at now, it does look like a, what I would call a monolithic, just giant wall to the right. Um, so I get the siding. I like the siding. I, I am curious if the siding is going to go all the way up into the portion that's going to be um, painted gray. Um, and I do think the landscaping would help. Um, but, you know, in terms of like the raptor tails and that, when you look at the old rendering that you guys showed, and I know it's on the town website, I actually thought it looked kind of nice where the roof overhang that was sticking out on the front of the buildings basically had what I would refer to as dimensional lumber um, in the roof, which gives it more of a classic older feel. And then I think, you know, raptor tails or, you know, if that makes it somehow look too modern because of the overall shape of the building, that's something that's more like historic corbels or something else that could, you know, just, I don't know, age it up a little bit. I, I've heard a lot of people say they think it's very modern looking and doesn't fit with the town. I don't think any of them realized that the siding was part of it, which I think helps a lot. And I get the trying to mimic the rafter tails with the town. Um, but like, for example, my husband and I, we redid a roof ourselves in Pennsylvania and we had rafter tails sticking out and we actually chose not to put soffits back on it because we could see the dimensional lumber because when we rebuild it, we use that instead of plywood or you know other options. So I think that can give it a more classic feel on the overhang um, without necessarily going to the level of like a gabled you know, thing like, um, like Tony was suggesting, although I totally get why he said that. Um, my other question, I, ha I do have a question about, you guys talked about the height at the front as you know, being 14 feet and uh, I believe it was 19 feet. I have it written down here somewhere. What is the height on the, the back of where that roof comes down? And how much is that height, I guess, not in terms of just removing trees, but how much is that going to affect having to limb up on the trees that are behind there? Like, is it going to interfere with a lot of lower limbs? Or are we far enough away from that to, you know, not have that happen? And yes, definitely, I won't geek out as much as Tony, <laughs> but I like to see the dimensions too. I like to know the heights. I like to know the width of the stage. And I understand there's a scale on there, but it, you know, having the existing footprint of where the trees are behind it a little bit, or at least the existing footprint of the community building is all very helpful in putting it into to perspective. So I like those details too. I figure more is always better, and then it saves me questions, you know, later on. Even even though I get your point for trying to make it, you know, less paper. <laughs> so. I don't know. Take your pick. <laughs> my well, the Ar the Arborist report actually shows the plans for the okay. trees, um, which I think you have, Andy, in this package. Um, it's like the third page of the Arborist report. And that's one of the things that we looked at with Eric, because one of the things that we wanted to do was try and save a couple of trees that did kind of hang over because it got a couple of live oaks that are kind of angled. Kind of like what we did with the um, town facilities where we actually went from a gable roof to a hip roof to be able to save that large live oak in the back. So right. we, were, we were very particular about that when we were looking at it. 
Um, and so I think when you look at that plan, those are the trees that are impacted by the design and not necessarily that they were impacted because they were within the footprint of the building, but they were impacted because of the close nature of the building um, and building foundations and everything else. So Eric and I, through the thing, tried to minimize as much as we could. And, you know, we were fortunate enough to have Susan walking alongside us through the whole thing. And at the end of the day, she kind of realized, okay, this is the right thing to do. So a lot of them are campers and not necessarily trees that we would ultimately want to save anyways. Um, right. So we were very, you know, diligent in that process. So um, we tried to minimize as much and try and keep as much as we could. Um, and then Eric has come up with a plan where we're trying to keep trees that are within close proximity of the footings, where we did what we did with the town facilities with root pruning, aerating, looking at large root structure, and that kind of thing. So we'll probably we'll end up doing that prior to the construction taking place. Okay. Um, this is Tom with Unbrady. I could address a couple of the architectural questions that you raised as well. Um, and um, yeah, and just for everybody to know, the 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 intent is our forty five percent submittal would include a lot more detailed information of the you know, elevations, uh, you know, the flat elevations of the building that show the heights of everything, sections cut through the building and understanding of what all the materials are and, and their transitions. Um, so um, the one comment about the siding on the front, um, the, the lap siding. So when it goes up into the gray area and maybe, maybe we put that rendering back up, back up on the screen. The, uh, the intent is that it is broken at the gray line there and that we have a, a different material from there up. Uh, one, two, break up that 14 foot tall or you know, to the underside of the trusses is probably about, probably about 12, 12 and a half. Um, but still it's a, it's a pretty tall wall. So to break that up horizontally uh, with two different materials, the gray material itself, we are still investigating uh, what will be appropriate, but what we wanna do is have a different texture. So where the lap siding you know, gives you that horizontal striated line across the elevation. In the gray area, we want to look at using more of a more of a flat product, a flush product um, that gives a different texture and can also go up kind of between those rafter tails a little more easily um, from a detailing aspect. Um, on the back side, you asked about the height of the back. Um, the low point of the roof along the back is 10 feet above the ground. And what about like the dimensional lumber just in the front end of that? I mean, I understand mm -hmm. it would be expensive to do it. I'm, I'm very well versed in how expensive <laughs> it is to do dimensional lumber on a whole roof because that's what we did for our entire garage um, that we have in Pennsylvania. But I mean, in terms of like, you know, just on the parts that would be exposed. Now, I understand you guys. I know it's a metal roof. Is it um, I'm a standing seam? Is that is it standing seam is the plan? But I mean, in terms of rafters, I know you guys were talking, things were gonna be metal. So is there any option to have it, you know, have like a dimensional lumber look that would definitely make it look a little less modern? Yeah, so one of the, one of the challenges we're, we, we're trying to achieve is to, is to balance the, you know, historic, um, you know, character and aesthetic with, um, uh, with the efficiency of the structure because we do also have a budget that we need to meet. Um, so the idea of these rafter tails would essentially be the roof structural members. So, but the proportion of them, so that basically a rafter coming out, uh, as Richard mentioned, would be would be a, a metal. Um, we're, we're looking at either a steel option or possibly an aluminum option. But the proportion of it, you know, being approximately you know two three inches wide by maybe eight ten inches tall, uh, being similar to dimensional lumber, so it has the same same general aesthetic. Um, and and you know painted in a white in a right. White I mean where it would be more or less soffit. Mm -hmm. So like if you look at the old rendering, the portion that would be equivalent to the soffit is where there was like a dimensional lumber effect. You could see the you know the lines that it was like you know like the overhang. I don't mean the actual rafter tails. I mean the actual part. That oh, the the decking that sits on top of it. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah, right. I mean that's 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 a bit much because that was really wide and humongous or whatever, but. You know, just just the look of the the lumber like that. I mean, that that is how old construction was. I mean, the garage that I'm talking about was actually an old carriage house, so it was built in 1898. So, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I, I have a 1935 house we just bought right. that we're renovating. So <laughs> I, I do appreciate all those historic details as well. Um, but what we have right now is really the roof decking on top of those, on top of those rafters, um, which is currently a, a steel roof decking. Um, I don't know if Richard or, or, or Cindy want to comment further if there's any, any other options we could look into. We could certainly do that for the next submittal. Yeah, Tom, one thing I want to chime in is, you know, we didn't, we did not specifically go with any wood, try to eliminate any wood in this structure because it's exposed. So basically we ended up either, and we haven't finalized, but we're looking at, you know, an aluminum or a steel structure to accommodate that look. Now the aluminum, you might be able to get, Tom, we could investigate that. We might be able to get a better, better looking um, underneath. And this is, you know, there's just not enough detail here to see what right. we're what we're trying to see, but uh, but that can definitely be looked at during the design. Okay. Another comment, um, and to add to what Richard's saying, we were told that there was a lot of concern for birds' nests that would potentially get up in the rafters and the woody area that you saw in the original rendering. So that's another reason why um, this approach was taken. Right. So maybe just an alternative that's not actual wood, but can kind of give that effect. So as I get that, I, I like everything aluminum. <laughs> I don't even like a wood fence. <laughs> yeah, we can we can uh, uh, Brandy, definitely... Yeah, Brandy, part of our part of our design and requirements of our design was a long-term sustainable main, maintainable building. And you know, we're suffering from some of the wood raptor rot, <laughs> all the other stuff on town hall. Yep. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why we went with the materials that we did on the new town facilities. And that's one of the things that we've had many conversations with McCree. So I think we'll ultimately end up with a long-term sustainable building that isn't going to cost the town a ton of money. Right. I think that answered most of my questions. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I had a mile sentence long, so. Well, you know my number. Appreciate it, Brandy. <laughs> so, Bill, I know you've had your hand up for a bit. Did you want to make your comment? And then yeah, we'll just, go on to Nora after that. Good, hey, Billy, the good news yeah. is on Zoom, your hand doesn't get tired when it's up that long. <laughs> you know, I, I won the beer stein holding competition at the brewery the other day. So <laughs> I, I, I'll have you know that uh, I'm well versed in keeping my hand up. Yes long periods of time. Anyway, I'll keep this brief. Um, as far as the amount of documentation um, in, in this, I understand that we're trying to pare it down and, and I was a fine arts major. So the less diagrams, the better for me. Uh, I would like to see the, the community room overlay uh, as far as the site plan goes on the next go around. Um, you know, I think personally, I think we have enough information. I'm comfortable moving forward. I did have a, one more question about um, the lighting and the sound package is, is, has that been addressed yet? Or is that something that's going to be, uh, addressed on the next step? I think, I think Bill, that's going to be addressed probably on the next step. So ultimately our goal with this is that we may end up with a, you know, drop down screen for movie night, those kind of things, but, and then also providing ample power twist locks for, you know, plug and play. Right. So what we okay. wanted, you know, we're not going to, you know, I don't think it's important for the town to provide lighting and all the other stuff, but what we want to do is provide the infrastructure to allow that to happen. So looking at lighting trust bars, twist locks, <clears throat> that kind of stuff where people can come in. Um, and we haven't really got into that yet because that's kind of really what we're going to do in the 45% documents. You know, do you have a lighting trust that, you know, comes down and has twist locks on it and they put their lighting on it and then raise it up. So those are all the kind of things we have to look at. We put a placeholder in the budget. I think it was uh, Andy and correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was like $45,000 to look at those kind of um, plug and play put aspects. Put a number in there, but yes, but for the entertainment system. Yes. Yeah, so that that's, uh, you know, we're still schematically figuring out what we're doing and but we've held dollars to be able to provide that opportunity for plug and play. All right, sounds good. I appreciate all, all of your hard work on all of this, everybody. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Bill. Nora, it's your turn. Uh, 
Um, yeah, so I echo the comments of, I think everyone has said, and that it's it's very hard without any, any numbers on this. Um, it's very hard to tell exactly how big it is, but when I look at it, it looks like it's a good bit bigger than the community room. So it would be great to see it superimposed over the existing community room. Because um, my concern is that we're going to lose event space. Um, you know, Parks and Rec does run among the lakes and Pet Fest, and they're two pretty big events. And this drawing looks like we would lose a lot of our Pet Fest event space. Um, and that, that would be a concern to us. Um, and then my second comment is on the uh, exercise equipment. Parks and Rec would love to work with Healthy West Orange on putting um, an exercise circuit into, into a Palmer Park, which is a park we're focused on this year because it, it needs a lot of updating. Um, so if that might be an option for them, that would be, I think, a, a, a much better place to put them. Yeah, I just have Thanks, to, Nora. Nora, yeah. I just have to do a deeper dive on um, what what the requirements of the grant are in proximity to the investment that Healthy West Orange is making. And um, I can drop back with you and we can look at that as well. All right. It's, it's, it's the kind of conversation we may want to, you know, have uh w with tracy and with you know yeah. with the rotary and and you know just to say hey you know here's some here's some feedback that we have um we have these other options um is that something that you know is gonna you know sit well uh and and make everybody feel good um i i have a hunch that it it probably will but you know you never know until you ask so um you know there's no harm in asking um and i do think one you know one of the things we can do nora is um you know, we, we do layouts for each event. Um, we may want to take those event layouts and, you know, kind of um, look at them overlaid with uh, the new uh, facility. I think we're going to find in many cases that it, you know, we're, we're probably going to be, it, it's a little hard to say, but I think we're going to be probably, you know, maybe a little less, maybe a little neutral. Um, but also you can, you know, you gain, um, you gain not having to bring in uh, a lot of expense in uh, portable toilets. Um, you gain the ability to um, use the stage as well for the events. And so you have your DJ up there. So, you know, there's, it is a, it is a give and take, um, but I think we could kind of do some overlays and, and make ourselves feel a lot more comfortable um, you know, and, 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 you know, the results will be what they'll be and we'll, we'll take a look at them, but just a thought. It would be, it would be a shame to build this really great pavilion for events and then lose a lot of event space. Wow. Well, it's our hope that we're actually gaining event space. So. That would be my hope too, because we had mm -hmm. to, last year at, at Pet Fest, we had to, um, uh, close up because we we just ran out of space. We had like 75 or 80 vendor booths and we just didn't have any place else to put them. Yeah. So, well, you know, the more space we could get, the, the, the better. If the town wants to have big events and maybe they don't. So. <laughs> well, I think that's the whole reason we're doing it for big events. Well, you know, I mean, I think we're doing it for good events and well-attended events and 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 also to be able to, you know, like I said, avoid the, the having to bring all the bathrooms in, which is not very attractive and and takes up parking spaces, as well as the opportunity to use the stage for part of the event as well. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of things that we do, like on the steps of town hall. Um, there's a lot of things that we do in, in some other areas that we could, you know, over time kind of transition to the new space. Um, and it would be, you know, it, it would serve, uh, hopefully, as an enhancement. So you know, but I do think, you know, let's, let's do the overlays and see where we're actually at. But you're right. If you need 75 tents, Nora, like we're, yeah, you're totally right. We're maxed. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we'll have to continue to try to get a little creative or, or that just may be our max, you know, I mean, 75 tents just may be it. So, um, yeah, we'll have to see. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Nora. Mr. Withers. 
you say Mr. or Mrs.? Mr. Withers. <laughs> oh, okay. Can we, she had her hand up first. <laughs> Smart man. Can we go to the oh, elevation? Man. Would you like your wife to go first, Mr. Yeah, Withers? Angela, you go before him because I yes, because I like her accent better. So please, <laughs> Mrs. Withers. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for that. Thank you, Stephen. I'll defer. Mine is very brief. I really just want to make a very positive comment about the people who are expressing concerns about the somewhat more contemporary look of the pavilion. What I like about that is that it actually allows more traditional town halls to shine. This sits back there in a lovely, very simple, uncluttered way. Uh, and yes, the addition of some appropriate little crepe myrtles and things here and there, but it allows Town Hall to be our lovely, traditional, iconic feature. And this as a lovely, simple, uncluttered backdrop to all of that. So I just wanted to say kudos to the architects. I think I like that concept. And everybody, I think, has enjoyed that little contemporary piece between the two more traditional buildings that the new town offices, this will enhance our town space in a similar way. So thank you, I'm all for it. Thank you, Mrs. Withers. Now it's you, Stephen. Um, my comment goes back to Bill's uh, comment about the facade being long. Hey, Stephen, can you start over and do it in an Australian <laughs> accent? Good on, <eye>, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, um, thing that bothers me about the facade is you've got the rotary rondelle place in that corner, which looks exactly where it should be. And then you've got the healthy West Orange lost. It's just sort of floating on the other side. And it seems like if you had an articulation, because, you know, Bill was talking about that, that just reflected the uh, corner past the wet, healthy West Orange thing. So you broke that long wall up. <laughs> Uh, it, it's an option. It's Hunt and Brady's responsibility, but I find the Healthy West Orange logo sort of lost in that long wall. I want it anchored somehow. That's just a design comment. Yeah, it's a very, very good comment. I appreciate it and, and agree. Yeah, okay. All right. Is that uh, is that everyone who uh, wished to speak on the, the topic tonight thus far? All right, Council, at this point, I would just like to get a little bit of uh, feel from you in terms of are we in a place where we feel like we can allow the team to move forward with the comments that we have provided, with the input that we've provided, uh, and with the guidance that we've provided to go do their best uh, and come back to us, or do or, or are we more in a place where we want to give staff and the team some deliverables <laughs> Um, that they can uh, get back to us. Uh, I think we're good to go to the to the next phase. I think they've got a lot of input from us and direction. And, uh, you know, I would like to see a little variety as far as design elements go and also the overlay. But, you know, I'm, uh, I'm fairly certain that all that can be achieved at the same time. Yeah, I concur. I concur. Okay, good. good. So um, obviously, as everyone knows, this is a uh, town workshop. So um, that, that does not constitute a vote. What we're doing is polling the council to see um, where we're at. If we've got the input that we need and we think we do, um, that's going to allow uh, the team to move forward to kind of bring us to the next stage where we will have additional public input and uh, additional um, options to look at. And we can look at some of these overlays. I think uh, the important thing here is that we um, keep the ball moving forward. We don't want to lose a lot of momentum as we roll into um, next next event season. You know, the, the, the sooner we can have the facility kind of flushed out and, and on its way, um, I think that serves the town uh, well. So that's my hope. And uh, again, I want to make sure that I, uh, I thank everyone for participating. I thought it was a good meeting. We got a lot of great input and um, everything was super constructive and well thought out. So if you guys will give me one second, I do have a couple quick, uh, just a quick update on um, some of you may know, some of you may not know, um, but uh, town council is aware and staff's aware that the Windermere Police Department is undergoing their mock uh, accreditation assessment. Um, that assessment, that mock assessment, which is 
um, which is a dry run, right? So there's a lot of new policies, a lot of new procedures. We want to get feedback uh, on those procedures. We want to make sure that they um, apply and meet every part of the standard uh, and that put us in a good position to receive our full police accreditation for our police department uh, upcoming in December. So uh, it's a big step. It's a step that we're all very, very proud of. Um, I, I know that uh, myself and Councilperson Martini were there yesterday during the kickoff of the event. Um, so they've been getting all that feedback at the police department. Tomorrow, they are going to have a debrief at 1.30 p.m. One of the things that it's important that we do as, as elected officials is to uh, make sure that the um, officials that do the assessment know that we're in support of the police department, we're in support of the accreditation process, because the accreditation process is not just, not just for the police department, right? It's for the community. It's for your elected officials, it's for your other staff, it's for residents. Um, it's about bringing the closest uh, thing to excellence that we can do for our police department to give them all the policies and procedures that they need um, to, to act in according, uh, you know, act with transparency, forthrightness, excellence, service, all those things that we hold near and dear and that we promise that we would support them in as, as they uh, work to uh, do all the great things they've done and rebuild over the past 10 years. So. Um, I ask that, uh, I don't think I'm going to be available tomorrow, uh, but I was hoping that we could have at least a couple of uh, council people there at 1.30 tomorrow. I All right? plan to be there, sir. Excellent. I plan to be there. That'll mean a lot. Chief asked me specifically, so. Um, yeah, I'll be there also. Appreciate that. I'll let him know that we'll have three or four council people there, so that's even better. Um, the other uh, the other thing if to think you... about and to add to your calendar is December 13th through the 15th. That is when the actual accreditation will occur. And it is even doubly important that we are there at that time. So typically there's a kickoff meeting early in the morning when they come. And then at the end, there's like a mid afternoon or early afternoon, um, there'll, there'll be an assessment session where, a session where they'll discuss any of their findings um, as well as all of, uh, you know, all of the, the standards being met, which is what we're certainly hoping for. And I know that that is what we will receive. Um, so just please add that to your calendar. Um, give all the police department the support. They have been really rallying and working on this, not only uh, over the past few weeks, incredibly hard, but over the past several years. Um, we've shown our commitment to them in terms of, uh, you know, the facility and the infrastructure and the equipment and supplies and, and training that we provide for our department to make sure that they're able to uh, do their job. So, hey, Mayor, uh, just real quick, yes, sir. Ta Tanya, if you could pass on to Robert and or Diane uh, to send calendar invites for those meetings, just to make sure we're, you know, we, we block those out on the calendars, that would be great. I will. That would be awesome. Yes. Um, that's all I have. I just wanted to, uh, to um, see if we can make sure that we're there to support them and uh, proud of all their efforts, proud of the entire staff, proud of you guys. Uh, and, uh, you know, thankful again to uh, Healthy West Orange and the Women and Rotary for all their efforts here and uh, we'll take another step. We'll keep on moving forward. Mr. Mayor, could um, staff ask for some clarification from town council before sure. we hop off? Um, are you wanting to have a second workshop or do you wanna go straight to the 45% plans? That's kind of the, the question we were wanting to clarify. No, I, I think that we're ready to move to the 45% plans. I believe that's what council is saying. Okay. Um, you know, knowing that there's still maybe some input at that point, but. Um, but we'll definitely have a second public workshop to make sure we promised everyone at least two public workshops. Um, that's what we've learned works best and, and we will stick with that. Mayor, point of clarification there, the 45% uh, CD set, is that correct, John? Okay. Yeah. So I okay. think what I think what we, and, and I'm with Robert, I think the best thing, the best thing for us is let us move to 45 and then we'll present to council, um, you know, have it, have the plans available. Anybody wants to come and speak. And then maybe do a town council workshop at 90% to make sure that we're there and then move forward to 100% and just crank from there. So I think what yeah. that does is it gives us an opportunity to move right into the construction documents, really answer a lot of y'all's questions relative to, you know, cross sections and building heights. And at 45, we still have time to, you know, modify, adjust and do everything else. And we'll do that at a council meeting as a presentation for you guys. And then if we need to do a workshop at 90, we'll figure that one out. Okay. I don't see council uh, objecting anyway. So that seems like a good solid plan moving forward. 
Um, the other thing that I offer up and, and you know, is uh, just remember that if, if you get to a place where you're like, mm, we're not sure to zig or zag um, based on feedback or, or, or what you're hearing, you know, let, let us know. We'll, we'll come together real quick. You know, we can, you know, virtually this isn't, uh, you know, it's not difficult and uh, we'll be able to kind of. Yeah, we'll uh, run it up to flagpole. Yep. yep. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And then as one final comment, Mr. Mayor, I just want to make note that uh, several residents sent comments to the town clerk, which she's making part of this record. Excellent. That was Susan Carter, um, Rob Hurst, Vicki Hurst, and Mr. Withers. So just wanting you to know that those came in, the clerk has them, they'll be made part of the record for this workshop. Yeah, and I, I think those, and those, were very, uh, to, those were really valuable. They were I forwarded mean, well to everybody. Out. Yeah, and, and, I, and I forwarded them to our design team, and actually Vicki had some really good comments about drinking fountain locations yep. and those kind of things. So we, um, as a design team, appreciate those comments, and some of those we're actually going to try and incorporate. Um, yeah, and you know, and we're lucky we have some we have some pretty skilled folks in town uh, exactly. in this area due to due to uh, their their work in 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 show business or or uh, at theme parks. You know, take advantage of those folks and you know, rather than pay a big uh, acoustic uh, acoustic acoustician, uh, we can uh, easy easy for me to say, right? Uh, yeah. We can you know maybe uh, just you know use those folks to help us out a little bit. Just make sure we're on the right path. Give us a little guidance. I mean, just as simple as you know what what's the right connectivity to have uh, for today's uh, you know music system and, and lighting and. Uh, you know, it's it's. I'm sure it's widely different than than it was just a few short years ago. So, yep, um, yep. And some robust Wi-Fi out there. I'm sure that'll be important too. So. And Dorothy right. wants me to make sure you all know she will send out every one of those comments to town council so they can see them. And yep. uh, town manager Smith would like to thank everybody for their participation on his behalf this evening. Thank you very much for everybody's input, and we will proceed accordingly. All right, sounds good. If oh, hey, else... uh, I think one last comment that I think is important because we never discussed it. And Andy, if you can give him an update on the demolition of the existing facility. Oh, because okay. um, one of the things that we were trying to do, and I'm sorry, I'm just in interjecting this at the end of the meeting, but, um, you know, we got so wrapped up in what the design was. Um, just so you guys know, I think we're looking at we have the building permit, which should be secured through PDCS. Yes. And I'll let you give them the update on that. We should have, it's one minor thing we need to do with the company that Byron is contracted with to do demolition on their schedule to start on Monday. And, and we, the, yeah, and the whole idea behind that was Robert had asked if we could try and get that down before the big event that they had November 5th. Yes. Um, and take the building down. So the intent for us is we're going to put up silt fence, demo the building probably in about two days, take it all away, and then put down some nice green grass so that by the time the event happens, I think it's November 5th, that uh, they'll have a little more space to use for that event. So Sounds good. I, yeah. I think that uh, council was uh, supportive and made aware of that at the last council meeting. Right? Yeah. Everybody good? Okay, good. Yep. Proceed until apprehended. Is all that is all that beer still in the community room? That's that's my only question. Yeah, I, I'm dropping that off to your house tomorrow. There's like 40 cases of beer in there. Yeah, okay. so it's coming. We should open a brewery. <laughs> hey, right? Billy's Brewery. Uh, I love that. There it is. So, uh, our and martini bar. <laughs> Thank you all for your time. All right. Nothing Thank else uh, for uh, for the good of the order. We will adjourn our. Thank you. At 7 .48 PM. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, all. Thank you.